Hey guys, welcome back to Home Built. We are getting near the pointy end of this build, but uh, today I need to get stuck back into um, tidying up just a bunch of little bits. Okay, so as I was saying, this week is a matter of going around and just tidying up a bunch of bits and pieces. There's a whole bunch of stuff that's not working very well uh, or not finished up properly, so I'm gonna get onto that. And the first thing I'm gonna tackle is <clears throat> this fuel system is still not right. I was driving around last week and um, it was the first sort of warmish day of spring. It wasn't hot, it was only about 25 degrees and I think it basically, it got vapor lock and it, uh, and it stopped. And some of that is due to the fact that this uh, engine bay is not sealed up properly. And um, it's also having the warm start issues still. And I, I put a lot of that down to, it's still just running too much fuel pressure. So what I've got myself is uh, I went down to Super Cheap and I ordered myself a, um, a Holy fuel pressure regulator. Um, this is a one to four PSI fuel pressure regulator. So I'm going to install this now, see if I can get it set up so that it's actually reading what I want, uh, setting it at between about two and a half to three PSI and, uh, and see if I can keep this thing running and not driving me crazy. I just want a nice reliable car. And at the moment I'm worried about taking it longer distances because it keeps breaking down on me and it shouldn't be doing that. So fuel pressure reg, first job, let's get into it. All right, I've loosely mounted this in here for now. I don't actually have any more fuel hose with me at the moment, so this is just gonna be loosely mounted in here. It's definitely not ideal, but it will do for now. I'm gonna start up the car and then um, connect up this gauge and see if I can then adjust the pressure and get it to just the right uh, amount of pressure, sort of two and a half to three PSI. Should be good. All right, now I'm getting a little bit frustrated. Um, at first, basically I'm not getting any fuel pressure into the, uh, into the car. I've cranked the fuel pressure regulator right up. I've, I've wound it right in and I looked it up and winding it in is the way to um, increase the fuel pressure with it. This fuel pressure regulator has one in and two outlets. Um, it's designed so it can be used for either single or dual carb cars. And I thought, oh, well, I can just take the, other, the, the block off cap off and I've connected my fuel pressure gauge into the other side, so that shouldn't affect things. And we're still not getting any fuel into the car. Like, uh, the, the gauge is barely moving when, the, um, when I'm cranking the car over, so it's not building up any pressure, which is not good. So, um, I need to do a bit more investigating. I'm gonna sort of disconnect it and just um, double check the pressure that's coming straight out of the pump now and start doing a bit of diagnosis. Okay, that has been a really frustrating morning. Um, adding insult to injuries, this is the second time I've filmed this because the first time I forgot to put the microphone on. At least I noticed, so uh, I can come back and film it now. Anyway, I've worked at it um, for ages. I stuffed around with this um, the fuel pressure uh, regulator in there and no matter how much I adjust it, um, all the way open, all the way closed, um, it's not showing any fuel pressure. It's uh, you, when I turn it over, as you might see in one of the the, uh, the previous video, you can sort of see it ticking, and you can see the fuel pump is pumping, but it's not getting any fuel pressure out of the regulator. So I don't know whether the regulator is not working properly or if I'm doing something wrong. Um, if any of you have experience with them, let me know. It is a proper Holly uh, one to four psi fuel pressure regulator, but um, it just doesn't seem to be working. So I put it back to normal and uh, after lots of pumping and priming, I've finally managed to get the car started again. The car's back running. <sighs> so that was pretty much um, a waste of time all morning. In any case, moving on. While I am still covered in fuel, 
uh, I'm going to have a go at tackling my dodgy fuel um, fuel level gauge. My next challenge is the fuel gauge in this car, ever since I got it, has not read correctly. So it, it does seem to move and travel the way it should, but when it is full, it only reads half a tank. And then it drops down and, you know, it's probably at half a tank when it's down on the reserve level. So I'm going to try and tackle that now. What I'm hoping is inside this tank, the actual sender, I'm, I'm hoping is just the uh, simple float type. And it just, it just um, hopefully I can just bend the arm of the float and uh, get it so that it reads true. So um, time to uh, pull this out and see what we're actually working with in here. I haven't, I haven't done any research, I'm just winging it. All right, so the fuel sender is similar to what I thought. I didn't realize it's, um, it's a bit of an odd design because it's got two floats in it. All I'm thinking is maybe this must sort of give you an average uh, fuel level depending on how the car's sloshing around. Because if you just had one down one end of the tank and you're going downhill, for example, it says you've got a lot of fuel. This, basically from what I can see, is this, this small uh, sender here, this is the one that actually sends the signal. So um, uh, I don't know if the camera's gonna pick it up, but inside here, um, it, it's just uh, running along a sensor as it goes up and down. And um, that, is, uh, that is what sends the signal inside. And what's happening is this level sits something like that. So when the tank is low, it's all the way down here. This sensor is, um, is at the bottom. When it goes all the way up to full, this sensor is only coming up to about halfway. So it needs to be going through its full travel. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just, um, for some reason this uh, little arm here comes down and bends up and I'm just gonna bend it and bend it down a bit more so that it actually can get its full travel the way it should and hopefully I have a, um, a working fuel gauge. That's my theory, we'll uh, put it to the test anyway. I've actually uh, pulled the gauge back out because it didn't work. And I've got the gauge upside down so it's, it's giving me maximum signal from the gauge. And I'll take you inside to the car. And with the key on, you can see that that is, that is all that the fuel tank is reading and it's all it's going to read. So obviously my issue is more in the uh, internal of Speedo itself. This is the, the internals of the fuel gauge. So I've taken the, um, the, the cover off of the gauge, the cover's there, and, um, and I had a look inside. And basically, the way I can see it works is there's this um, arm here that uh, has some small wires wrapped all the way around it, all the way up and all the way down. And um, what I assume happens is, um, I'm guessing, but, uh, I assume it's like a, a thermostat, you know, it's probably a bi-metal strip. So two bits of metal that expand at different rates. Um, and uh, when this gets charged, depending on how much 
um, power is put through it, it sort of lightly heats up this little strip and it bends to show you what, uh, how much fuel's in the tank. And um, so all I'm gonna try and do is I'm gonna try and um, ba basically when this, this, little, this little metal strip in behind here, you can see it, uh, it just has to move a tiny little amount to make the, uh, the needle move quite a bit. So what I'm gonna do is, uh, is I'm just gonna try and bend this, just this tab, just the needle basically, just a bit so that um, I actually get a true reading on my gauge and hopefully that works and hopefully I don't wreck the thing. It's so fiddly and delicate and um, I'm usually more of a big, uh, big brute using force rather than uh, actually using finesse. <laughs> so we'll see how it goes. Okay, so I managed to strip out the center of the steering column and I found a wire that was broken off in here and I managed to reconnect it, connect up the horn and um, I've got this really cool uh, power scanner that I got. It's a fantastic piece of gear for uh, using for automotive stuff. Basically, you connect it to uh, the positive and, and negative of the car, of the battery terminals of the car, but you can check continuity of the circuit but also you can just touch it on anything and, uh, and see whether it's actually, it's grounded. And um, if it comes up with, uh, it turns red, it'll tell you then, okay, yeah, then you're, you've got a, uh, a positive connection in the car. But it's also got the ability that you can, if you press the button, you can actually send power to whatever you're testing. So if you wanted to test a fuse or test something and just to see if something works, you can send power directly to it, 712 volts, by pressing the button. Or uh, contrastingly, if you wanted to send um, uh, the negative, if you want to do sort of negatively charge something and you're not sure if it is, you can actually hit the, uh, the down and, and negatively charge it. So it's a fantastic piece of gear. In any case, I managed to sort out this, um, this little uh, wire that I've extended here is the horn. So we have a working, we have a working horn wire. The trouble is, is that I need to somehow get this to work with the horn itself. So that is my next challenge. It's really not my day. I messed around and realized that the horn was not going to work in its existing configuration. There used to be this, uh, this little switch that was wired in through into the dash. So, I spent a while then wiring it up so that I could just have this uh, this switch on the dash, which is far from ideal, but I could just sort of flick it on and off, and it would uh, it would work as my horn. The switch must not work, which is what's really really infuriating. So frustrating. I just want to just want to get something that worked and actually have some progress for the day. It's getting really frustrating. <sighs> All right, well that's zero from three. 
So <laughs> let's try for uh, let's try for four. My next challenge to uh, start tackling is um, I'm not sure if the camera can pick it up, but down in here, the there's a there's a rubber that joins the the engine tray to the body of the car. Um, it's supposed to seal it in. This whole tray needs to be sealed so that the um, the cooling system of the Beetle works correctly. And my rubber is completely perished. I have a nice new rubber. Whether I can actually put it in while the engine is still in the car is um, something for me to attempt. Yes, <laughs> finally. After struggling with little annoying things all day, I finally have a win. I managed to get this rubber in and it's all clipped in and it's all good. Getting the old one out was a nightmare. It was such a lot of work. Like, uh, you know, it was just breaking into bits. Much, much easier putting the new one in, uh, which I was quite surprised about, but it's actually clipped in nicely. It's all, it's all looking good. So um, that means I'm completely out of time. And it's time for Fun Facts with Mrs. Jeff. Hey guys. In 1968, Volkswagen publicly announced its withdrawal from Australian manufacturing as it was no longer viable. The $50 million that had been invested in Australian manufacturing was written off. All of the presses and tooling was sold off to other Volkswagen factories around the world and the master body jig was sent off to Brazil where they continued to make Australian small window bodies until the 1990s. The plant was completely converted to assemble the complete knockdown kits from Germany. 1968 was also the year the split window transporters were replaced with the new bay window T2s. That was more frustrating a day than I was hoping. Um, sometimes things just don't go your way. Even though three of the four things I tried today didn't work, I still have some idea where to go. No idea really with the, uh, the fuel pressure regulator. I'm not sure what's going on with that, why I've got having issues. Uh, and the horn, I'll probably eventually order the, uh, the new indicator assembly so I can use the factory horn. We'll see how that goes. <laughs> In any case, uh, yeah, we're getting close, but uh, I'm really, really close. And so is our cat. <laughs> yes. Anyway. <laughs> All right, guys. Um, if you're enjoying the channel, please like and subscribe. And you can follow us on Facebook and Instagram. And there is cool merchandise available cool if merch. you'd like to help us out. Cool uh, John Lemon shirts and coffee mugs in the description. You know the deal. All right, guys. <laughs> Till next time. Hey, guys. Oh, sh hey, sure. There'll be bloopers. Master body jig. Master body jig. Window bodies. Australian small window bodies. That was right. Cool. <laughs> that was something weird. Australian small body windows until the 1990s. Do we do it again? Once more? It's like if I make a certain face, it'll come out easily. Yeah.